That's part of the ego thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I had these people with me that always thought they could do better than me, certainly. So there was a little bit of problem, and it's all outlined in the book, but we handled it as best we could for the time. Eventually, uh, it was too much. Okay. I'm going to give the audience something to think about. You want to hear the inside story? Read the book. As I've heard the story from somebody who was on everybody else's campaign, right? Everybody else has an opinion. That's right. Everybody thinks that that should have happened and that was supposed to happen and we had a deal here and they had a deal there and he didn't live up to his deal. Yeah. It always reminds me of when my other friend, Simon DeYoung, who was the NDP member of parliament for Regina East, yeah. wore the wire in a conversation with Dave Barrett. Remember that one? And uh, That's right. That one? And, That's right. And Simon and I were good friends for years and years and years and years and you never know what somebody's going to do to you, do you? No, no, nope, that's never right. Know. It's a crazy business. People now come to me and say, would you know, I'm interested in, well, as a matter of fact, I spoke to a fellow this afternoon. He wants a couple of books. I may have to deliver those to him tonight. But you can't he, take the one as mine. I, I've got a few more. Right. I always carry some with me. Oh, okay. So if anyone watching this sees me someplace, ask me for a book. I'll probably and have them. In that slow, the slow Mercedes that you're driving. It'll slow down. It'll the stop backwards. wherever to sell if a you, book. If you see a black 2001 Mercedes with this good-looking, gray-haired, silver-haired fox and a gorgeous silver-haired lady sitting in it, that's Bill. <laughs> Just honk your horn, cut in front of him, say, book. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so where the fellows, were we? Well, the fellow has this <laughs> afternoon so the and wants two books. Yeah. So uh, he I think said, this is really cool. I, I you can just to, phone Bill, he'll deliver. I want to read the books because I think I want to go into politics. So I said, well, you got to be crazy. But read the book. Well, that'll change your mind about politics, perhaps. Crazy business. Okay. And David, you kind of toyed with politics once oh, yeah. or twice. I ran for mayor. Yeah, yeah. Three times. You were you quite involved. Yeah. 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 Well, I got. But it was fun, wasn't no, it? Yeah. In eighty. You know what? That was probably one of the most fun times in all of my political years. Well, running for mayor of Vancouver, I met people and groups and and you know the I very still, oh it was wonderful running, running for mayor of vancouver it was fun. i still have people 25 30 years later come up and say i was at such and such or i was at such and such for instance let me just play games with you for a second do you remember the jillian guess affair yes okay and um she was a juror who had an affair yes. with the person who was accused Being, of murder yes, right yes and the peter the peter gill that she had the affair with was Paul Gill's brother. No, you know who Paul Gill is. Yes. Paul Gill is the fellow who let, had his hand up with Udall DeSange when Udall won. That's so the right. president, the That's president of the NDP party, the chief fundraiser, was also my fundraiser in '78 when I ran for mayor of Vancouver. I mean, I'm just doing the small world. But every time you looked at, you looked in the sun, they would have a picture of Peter Gill looking like he just got hauled out of a dim, dumpster. And that's the way all that publicity went. It was like everybody was out to get. Not once did they say, you know, this fellow that's accused of murder is the brother of Peter Gill, the president of the NDP, the fellow who held his hand up with Eugel DeSange when they won as premier of BC, the leader of the NDP party, yeah. lives in an $800,000 house, drives a $100,000 car, and wears $1,000 suits. They always showed the picture of this guy that looked like he just was dragged out of a dumpster. Right. Totally different image, if I tell it that way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that's politics, what the heck. Um, yeah. <laughs> and when, again, just to put it, into, when I ran for mayor of Vancouver, there were no sidewalk cutouts for wheelchairs. Right? That's right. There was no wheelchair taxis. That's right. There was no buses that kneeled down you could put a bus on. There were no handicapped parking spots to speak of in 19, as late as 1982. Hard to remember how they just suddenly yeah, yeah, took yeah. off. And I still say that, that... That was part of your campaign. It absolutely was. Yeah. And I still want to see them put a... I want the end parking spot on every city block in Vancouver to be a high, uh, handicap parking meter. Because if you go to St. John's, Newfoundland, along Water Street, and every parking meter, every block with parking meters in Newfoundland, the first bit, or with or without parking meters, the first space is always a handicapped space. So that somebody who maybe can't turn well because driving can drive straight into the space. And every block yep. has a handicap space. And isn't that what we should have here? Yeah, yeah. Because you're in good health, and I'm in good health. But, you know, Mike had that accident, and 
yeah. ended up wheelchair bound for a while. It can happen to any one of us. It's true. Yeah. Like that. Let's get back to, I'm going to get you back to Whistler. You took over. You won the election. You became the premier. I've given you credit for taking us from number 60 to number one. Our good acquaintance, Mike Harcourt, gets elected after you resign. We're number one. And uh, the fantasy garden story is, I love your explanation there. I kept on getting madder and madder and madder for you on your side, because that was such a bunch of bull crap that it, yeah. whatever. Nobody I probably took it too seriously myself. Well, yeah. you know. However, yeah. Um, and Mike then made the Tadashini watershed park out there. Have you ever been to the Tadashini? Have I what? Have you been there? No. Do you know where it is? I know where it is. Yeah, it's up there. You know, it's about the, the size border. of Nova Scotia, but yeah. it's near the Yukon, well, on the border, It's actually. on the border of Alaska and, the, and uh, British Columbia, all the way up to Haines, Alaska, or Haines, uh, Haines Junction, and it's the largest park in the world. And there were two or three mines that were about to go in there, and they couldn't put the mines in after that, so all the mining people in B.C. quit. And we went from number one, to number 89. Yeah. But I don't just blame the NDP for that because you started Indian land claims, didn't you? You started the negoti negotiations. You started the treaty process. Yes and no. I mean, I, uh, that's very kind of you to suggest that I got as far as that I didn't because I was re very reluctant, uh, in part because I saw it as a federal responsibility and in part because my solution was give the individuals give, money. Give the individuals good money, yeah. lots of money. And you can give it to them right now or give it to them over time or give it to them in kind by land, by an education or a business or whatever. That was my plan. It needed a lot of refinement, but it was final at the end they would be like everyone else in every respect, which incidentally, I think we're most want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in all fairness, and I know you're very involved in this too, and you have your own views as to how it might best be done, but um, uh, I think for the most part, we tend to hear from the bureaucracy within the First Nation, First Nations, which includes a lot of lawyers. We tend to hear from the chiefs and the council members but when you really get down to the grassroots, they're just like everybody else. They want the same things for themselves, for their families. They want the same opportunities. And they've been denied the opportunities in many instances. Well, we spent 100 years taking yeah, their we've, children away we've, from them. We've denied them the opportunities. Right. It's not so much what we did, it's what we haven't done. Okay. Do you do not really get the treaty negotiation process going again? You know that uh, happened under your watch. So yeah, if you didn't uh, what, do it, what who did happened? It? What happened? I set up a committee of uh, people from various uh, walks of life and 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 people of various statures, including native people. A chief. Uh, I'm trying to think. I now you see now you're testing me for my, for names. Um, the chief of the. Uh, First Nations in West Bank, they're located. Okay, okay. Well, there's West Bank. I don't remember West Bank. Penticton is Phillips. Yeah. Robert, uh, Robert yeah. was his first yeah. name, Robert. Anyway, mean, yes. great guy. Yeah. He was part of that group. And we traveled all over the province. I went myself. And we met with the various Indian bands throughout the province to really determine what their demands or their needs or their wants that's as far as we got. We didn't get into settlements. We oh, didn't yeah, get into but, you, but you started this process the first time it was happening in 50 years okay. in B.C. That's true. You went out and you started it Started happening. the process. And because you started that process, people who are in business who might want to put a mine in or might want to do something or build a road or whatever, I won't, uh, should we talk about Apex Ski Resort and Penticton? No, that was, we could do that one too. Yeah. As I actually have a copy of a letter you wrote to them one time saying that the road was a gazetted road. Do you remember that one? Yeah. That letter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, it was a gazetted road, but there was 29 changes where they made the highways department to just change the road, and the gazetted road meant nothing at that point. But that's another story. You tried. Because of that, people went ahead, and they did investments. And